Hi, this is Mrs. Westmoreland, and this is an introductory video on empirical and molecular formulas. An empirical formula, which gets its name because it is found from an experiment, is a formula that has been reduced to the lowest terms. A molecular formula is a formula of a compound in which the subscripts give the actual number of each element in the molecule the way it exists in nature. Here are some examples of some empirical and molecular formulas and from these examples you should notice a couple things. Um, in some cases the molecular formula is the same as the empirical formula. The subscripts of each atom are the same. Uh, you should also notice that you can multiply the empirical formula by some whole number um, and get a molecular formula as well. And finally, you should notice that the same empirical formula can actually represent different molecular formulas different molecules with different physical and chemical properties. So, chemists use empirical formula. In an experiment, they can analyze the percent composition of a compound. So they know what percent is each element, and from that they can find the empirical formula. Then, if they have some additional information and some additional measurements, they can find the molecular formula as well. So here's a list of steps for finding empirical formula. You should pay attention to these steps, but it's a lot easier to actually think about them in terms of doing an example problem, which I'll do in just a moment. So if you have percentages of each element, you can assume that the sample is 100 grams and therefore you simply take off the percent sign and change it into grams because 32% would be 32 grams if you had 100 grams. Then you convert from mass to moles uh, by dividing by the molar mass of the element, the atomic mass from the periodic table. From the answers to step two, you select the smallest answer and you divide through all of the values by the smallest one. At this point, you'll see either whole numbers or things that are decimal forms of simple fractions, like 0.33 for a third or 0.25 for a fourth. And at that point, we need to multiply through to get rid of those fractions. Once we get a whole number ratio, these are the subscripts that are used in the empirical formula. So here's an example of empirical formula, which says find the empirical formula of a compound which contains 54.93% potassium, 38.73% boron, and 6.34% hydrogen. So the first step is to literally take off the percent symbol and replace it with a gram. Assuming we have a 100 gram sample. Then we divide each of those masses by the molar mass of the element. We can use the whole number from the periodic table. At this point, we want to keep at least four sig figs in your mole answers because we don't want to round too soon in these problems. Looking at the four an of three answers, 1.408, 3.521, and 6.34, we choose the smallest one, 1.408, and divide through by 1.408 all three of those answers. So 1.408 divided by itself is 1, 3.521 divided by 1.408 is 2.5, and 6.34 divided by 1.408 is 4.5. So at this point I'm expecting whole numbers or something that is a simple fraction. 
So I've got two and a half and four and a half and one as my ratio. So I need to get rid of the fractions. And so since it's all halves, I multiply all of the numbers through by two. So I get a ratio of two to five to nine, and those subscripts then become, uh, those numbers then become the subscripts in my empirical formula. Here's another example. Find the empirical formula of a compound which contains 26.8% tin, 16% chlorine, and 57.2% iodine. Step one, change out the percent for grams. Step two, divide by the molar mass of the element. You can use the whole number rounded at atomic mass from the periodic table. Remember, copper and chlorine are not rounded to whole numbers, so we use 35.5 in this case for chlorine. Keep those answers to at least four sig figs, and then choose the smallest one to divide through. And so in this case, we don't get any fractions. We get whole numbers right away. One to two to two is our ratio, and that becomes our empirical formula subscripts. So, in summary, the steps to solving an empirical formula is, number one, change any percents to mass. Number two, change from mass to mole by dividing by the molar mass. Number three, divide by the smallest answer. And number four, multiply to whole to get rid of those fractions. So molecular formulas are either the same as the experimentally determined empirical formula or it's some whole number multiple of it. And so if we need to know the molecular formula, we need to know the empirical formula and the molar mass of the entire compound. And here's some steps for finding molecular formula. First, we calculate the mass of the empirical formula, adding up the numbers from the periodic table. Then we divide the known molar mass, which would be given the problem by the mass of the empirical formula. This will give us a whole number. That is how much larger the molecular formula is compared to the empirical formula. So we multiply that number by the subscripts to get the, the molecular formula. So here's an example of that. The molar mass of a compound is 181.50 grams per mole, and the empirical formula is C2HCl. What is the molecular formula? So first, I calculate the molar mass of the empirical formula. So two times the mass of carbon from the periodic table, 12, plus the mass of hydrogen, one, plus the mass of chlorine, 35.5, gives me 60.5 grams per mole as the molar mass of the empirical formula. Then I divide the molar mass of the molecular formula by the molar mass of the empirical formula, and I get three. So that tells me that the molecular formula is three times bigger than, than the empirical formula, and therefore I should multiply the subscripts of the empirical formula by three to get the molecular formula. And here's a last example where you first have to find the empirical formula and then use that to find the molecular formula. So find the empirical formula for a compound containing only carbon and hydrogen if it is known to contain 84.21% carbon. If the molar mass is 114 grams per mole, what is the molecular formula of this compound? So I know the compound contains carbon and hydrogen. If it's 84.21% carbon, then I know the rest, subtracting 84.21 from 100, is the percentage of hydrogen. So I change percent to mass, take off the percent symbol, 
change it to a G. Then I go from mass to mole, dividing by the molar mass of each element from the periodic table. Keep those answers to four sig figs. Then I choose the smaller of the two answers and divide through both by that number. Since I get 2.25 as my answer, that's like the fraction 1 fourth, I need to multiply both through by 4 to get rid of that fraction. So my simplest ratio is 4 to 9, and my empirical formula is C4H9. Then to get the molecular formula, I calculate the mass of C4H9. 4 times 12 for the mass of carbon, and 9 times 1 for the mass of hydrogen. Gives me 57 grams per mole for the mass of the empirical formula. In the problem, it told me that the molecular formula mass was 114. If I divide 114 by 57, I get 2. That tells me the molecular formula is 2 times larger than the empirical formula, so I multiply the subscripts by 2 to get a molecular formula of C8H18. Thanks for listening.